DreamWorks is an animation studio that is mostly looked down upon for not being as successful as the big boys like Disney and Pixar, and while yeah, DreamWorks has produced some absolute stinkers, when they find something good that resonates with audiences, they can hit it out of the park. And unlike Disney and Pixar, DreamWorks seems to know which films warrant sequels and which ones don't. Except Madagascar, that trilogy is just bizarre. That brings me to one of my favorite animated trilogies of all time, Kung Fu Panda. Now while I would love to talk about every single movie in this trilogy with extensive amounts of detail, this is my first video so I'm only going to pick one thing that I love about these movies to focus on. And that one thing is one of the biggest, baddest, most intimidating villains ever created by DreamWorks Animation Studios. Behold, Tai Long. Now, there's a lot of ways to establish an antagonist. It can be done through exposition or dialogue, but this movie chooses to do it through action by having Tai Long beat the crap out of people for four minutes and it is one of the most badass things I have ever seen. Before this scene, all we knew of Tai Long was that Ugwe had a vision that he would return. In this scene, just the mention of Tai Long's name causes Shifu to freak out, which further establishes how intimidating this character is. Also in that scene, Ugwe drops this amazing line. Destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. One often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. I love this line. It holds so much significance. When Ugwe warns Shifu that Tai Long will return, Shifu freaks out and acts irrationally out of fear. He immediately sends a bird to go to the prison, which leads to the feather falling to Tai Long, and he uses that feather, that one tiny insignificant feather, to help him escape the most heavily guarded prison in the Kung Fu Panda cinematic universe. Out of fear for his former apprentice Tai Long, Shifu met his destiny on the road he took to avoid it. This prison escape scene does everything to establish Tai Long as a credible threat, with him completing seemingly impossible tasks with ease. Not only does this display the absolutely absurd physical abilities of this character, but it also shows his intelligence and cunning. Tai Long uses a feather to break free from his restraints. He then uses the guard's own giant crossbows against them to break his chains, and he then uses those crossbows as stepping stones to reach the hanging platform where he avoids being struck down by thousands of tiny red arrows, which makes for a really cool visual. After this, Tai Long manages to get off the hanging platform right before the chain is cut, where he then proceeds to kick the crap out of everyone. This dude is insane. But that's not even the most insane part. I'm sure if you've seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. Tai Long, after fighting his way from the bottom floor all the way up to the top, is met by every single rhino he's yet to destroy. Tai Long growls, clenching his fist and adjusting his stance. He is ready to take on every single one of these rhinos, but both Tai Long and the viewer's expectations are subverted when we see a flaming arrow shot at the prison ceiling, sending massive rocks tumbling down. These rhinos know they are no match for Tai Long in hand-to-hand -hand combat, since they already tried and failed at that. They are willing to destroy their entire prison to make sure Tai Long doesn't escape. At first, he tries to jump but comes up short. The rhinos think they've won until Tai Long shows the full extent of his power. Using the fallen pieces as stepping stones, Tai Long works his way back up, but he doesn't go for the rhinos like before. He is thinking bigger. He claws his way up, grabbing the explosives set off by the flaming arrow and throwing them at the rhinos, leaving them absolutely mortified as they realize the true power of Tai Long. 
Also, one quick thing I'd like to add is that I love the use of color in this scene, with the dark prison and the bright red. It adds even more to this scene by going hand in hand with the animation to create some spectacular visuals with the red representing the evil that Tai Lung brings to this scene. We even see this expanded on in the second film with Lord Shen, but that's a topic for a different video. After the prison escape scene does a great job of establishing Tai Lung as a credible threat and a physical freak, we now get to see him more fleshed out as we learn about his backstory. However, his backstory is told through the hero's perspective, but what about Tai Lung's perspective? If I was told I was destined for something and trained for it my whole life and then couldn't have it, I'd be pretty mad too. Obviously, it doesn't justify his actions, but you can now understand why he is so hungry for revenge. In his mind, the scroll belongs to him. That's what Shifu told him for years until he did nothing when Ugwe said otherwise. Tai Long was constantly praised and was taught everything by Shifu, so when he was finally told he couldn't have something, he completely lost it. This comes more to the forefront during Tai Long and Shifu's confrontation. Speaking of which, we are finally gonna get to that scene. <laughs> Okay, so I lied. Before we talk about the Tai Lung and Shifu fight, we have to talk about the bridge fight. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, Tai Lung briefly makes eye contact with the fire before roaring and springing into action only to be intercepted by a kick from Tigress. We then see Tigress adjusting her stance while Tai Lung seems relaxed and at ease, like he's not taking the five seriously. And he doesn't. This leopard is going easy, and it still takes all five of them, using all of their strength and teamwork to beat him. It isn't until they think they have Tai Lung beat where he shows off his true power. This is similar to the prison scene. Tai Lung tried making the easy jump, and when he couldn't do that, he went all out. The same thing applies here. He doesn't use his full power and the five beat him, so Tai Lung has to go all out, using the ropes from the fallen bridge to swing himself across the gap, landing right behind the five, where we see that they are just as mortified as the rhinos who came before them as they realize Tai Lung's true power. Then, with his nerve attack, he wipes out the five with ease. He could have killed them, but instead, he chooses to allow them to live in fear and to send a message to Master Shifu. Also, this is a kid's movie. This scene is legendary, but still, they managed to top it. Tai Lung and Shifu's fight could honestly be an entire video in itself. The animation, despite being made over 10 years ago, holds up excellently and we get some beautiful and gruesome shots with intricate yet easy to follow hand-to-hand -hand combat while an exceptional score brings it all together. It's the student versus the teacher, the master versus the apprentice, except this time, the one who is holding back is not Tai Lung, but Master Shifu due to his father-like love for his former apprentice. The scene begins with Shifu patiently waiting for the arrival of Tai Lung. We see the doors of the Jade Palace slowly open. Shifu closes his eyes, and in the next shot, we hear a crash of lightning with Tai Lung standing before him. He stands a few steps below, but still towers menacingly over his former master. In this fight, we see the full rage and anger of Tai Lung on display. You can hear it in his voice as he throws weapons at Shifu, which he is able to expertly dodge and avoid. Notice how Tai Lung is always the one on the attack, while Shifu chooses to fight defensively. It isn't until when Tai Lung grabs Master Ugwe's stick that Shifu finally attacks first, but still he is bested by Tai Lung, which leads to the stick breaking. 
we see blossoms briefly blow by in the wind, signifying Ugwe's presence, with a look of disbelief and anguish on Shifu's face before he is blindsided by Tai Long and the fight continues. Tai Long is on the attack once again as they go through the roof, fighting into the sky. Shifu once again doesn't attack. He only uses Tai Long's strength against him to pin his arm behind him, but it is still not enough to stop Tai Long's fury. He lets out a powerful yowl as he drives Shifu through the roof, kicking him against the wall to land unceremoniously while Tai Long lands on his feet and literally starts beating Shifu with fire in his claws, signifying the fiery rage that he is fighting with. Shifu can't even fight back. Tai Long beats Shifu to a pulp, demanding to know how proud his master is now. And then Shifu tells him, and for a brief moment, we see remorse in Tai Long's eyes before they glisten over with rage. He has come too far to stop, and not even Shifu can save him. This scene is a masterpiece. The animation, the score, the dialogue, the action, the emotion. It has everything you want in a fight, and I would take this 4 minute fight over any 30 to 40 minute fight that Marvel gives me. In Tai Long's final moments, he is defeated by Po, and we see Tai Long's descent into madness. In every scene that Tai Long has appeared in up to this point, he has always had the upper hand, but now, with Po's unorthodox style, he's thrown off guard. It's not necessarily that Po is stronger than him, just that Tai Long's obsession with the Dragon Scroll is causing him to lose the sense of control that he's always had in every previous battle. When Tai Long sees that the scroll is blank, that is the tipping point. He cannot come to terms with it and is rendered pathetic, then promptly defeated. Tai Long is an excellent villain. Ian McShane does a great job bringing this character to life. You can hear the anger and emotion in his voice, especially in the Shifu fight. Heck, even the sounds used, with the growls and roars, don't feel out of place and make the character even more intimidating. Every scene he's in builds on the last and his quest for power makes him always appear as an active threat. His physical abilities are unmatched and even when he's not giving his all, he is still very dangerous. In his fight with Shifu, Taiwan pulls no punches and we get one of the greatest animated fight sequences I have ever seen. In the end, however, it is Tai Long's own hunger for power that leads to his demise. This menacing villain plays a key role in why Kung Fu Panda is such an excellent film. Every time he comes on screen, you know you're going to witness something spectacular. I firmly believe that without a villain as strong as Tai Long, Kung Fu Panda may not have been good enough to warrant a sequel. You want proof? Go watch the original trailer. They do a very clever tactic of not revealing the villain in the trailer, which I actually like because they don't give away the entire plot like a lot of films do nowadays. However, without Tai Lung, the trailer makes Kung Fu Panda look like a regular campy kids movie. Now obviously without Tai Lung, he would still have posed great development, but it wouldn't feel as triumphant if he was only defeating an average villain who didn't elevate every scene he was in. What I'm trying to say is, I'm happy we got a villain like Tai Long. In a movie with Kung Fu in the title, it makes sense to have the villain be a physical freak who can defeat anyone in hand-to-hand -hand combat and doesn't need an army like Shen or Kai. He's one of the most intimidating villains DreamWorks has ever created simply because of how well his fighting skills are established. Is he the best villain in the Kung Fu Panda trilogy though? I don't know, Kai might have that locked up.